Good morning, Higher Expectations Church. It's good to see you all here this morning. If you would, as we open up the Word of God, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 3. I will be reading Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Proverbs 3, 1 through 7. It reads, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Heavenly Father, that allowed us to get out of bed, make our way down here, down 1960, the church, the fellowship, Heavenly Father, with our friends, with our family, with our other believers, God. <clears throat> we don't want to take for granted, God, that not everybody got up this morning, Heavenly Father. Not everybody was able to move their limbs this morning, Heavenly Father. Not everybody woke up in their right mind, but we are here, Heavenly Father, and we want to give you praise. We want to give you honor. We want to give you glory, God. I don't know what type of week it, each person here has had or any, each person online has had, God, but I pray that you are allow you allow us to put that aside, God. Put, put aside the, all the bad, all the negative things that are going on, not just in our lives, but in the country, God, and help us to at this moment focus on you, focus on Jesus who died on the cross for our sins, who we celebrate on this day, Heavenly Father. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as we continue to worship, Heavenly Father, that you... Um, Give strength to the man of God who will be bringing the word of God this morning, Heavenly Father, and that it is a powerful word, Heavenly Father, that we can take, Heavenly Father, and live and apply to our lives each day that we continue to live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you can go with me to Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Amen. Galatians 6, verses 9 and 10. I know some of you are saying, man, pastor only has two verses. That must mean... Amen. He's, he's not going to be long-winded this morning. Amen. But Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, if you can stand for the reading of God's word. I just want to encourage us, amen. We're launching a series called This Is Us. Um, and it's really about what it means to be part of the body in this season that we're in. Uh, I'm so proud and so thankful and so grateful for how you guys have served each other uh, through this COVID crisis, and even particularly in the last couple of weeks, where it seems like the little COVID screen ran through so many of our homes, uh, you guys were faithful to care for each other, to look out for each other. And it got me thinking about, uh, as we transitioned, took a break from my spiritual gift series, to what does it mean to really be the body of Christ in the context of the local congregation? We love to talk about being in the body from a um, universal perspective, but what does it mean for us to be family? And so I wanted to just title this sermon this morning, All in the Family, All in the Family. Real quick, Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10 reads this way. It says, let us not get tired of doing good, for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up if we don't give up. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us work for the good of all, especially for those who belong to the household of faith. Let us work for the good of all, especially those who are in the household of faith. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I know I get on your nerves. Amen. But truth be told, you get on my nerves too. So it's really a fair exchange. It's really fair. It's really fair. Amen. It's, it's, it's probably where we have the greatest reciprocity happening in our lives is the fact that we're going to get on each other's 
nerves. You know, in 1979, there was this amazing song sung by four sisters from Philadelphia, Debbie, Joni, Kim, and Kathy. Paul's right there. If you know those names, I can tell you how old you are. Amen. I'm not giving it all to you, but if you think about Philadelphia and these four sisters, they sung this song. It went international. It became a hit. They sung it all over the world, and even today, it's sung at family reunions. Words of the song were real simple. The hook was real simple. It simply said, we are family. And then, you know, it was the mantra for the women's movement for a while. It said, I got all my sisters with me. But the song has been reworked. It's been sampled. It's been resung. And the essence of the song has not changed. We are family. They said, I got all my sisters with me. We are family. Then it would say, everybody get up and sing. In other words, it was like, uh, we family, we got issues, we got problems, but we still going to celebrate that we're together. It says everyone can see we're together as we walk by and just like birds of a feather, it won't tell no lie. I love it because they, they wrote the song, they put some ebonics in there, they didn't have proper grammar, but they wanted to get across the meaning in the message that they were indeed family. And my biological family. This time of the year, the 4th of July weekend, always meant that there was going to be a family gathering. When I was a kid, family reunion, and which also meant we was going to have a lot of fun, but it was going to be a lot of good food for the most part. But like many of those, uh, uh, and many of us, those are what I call foregone days. Why? Because our biological families are spread all over the world. Time and distance has separated us. We live in different spaces and places. However, God in his providence, right? God in his providence has a family that each of us have been adopted into and made heirs and joint heirs called the family of God. Can I just say this to you, amen? If your mom and daddy don't leave you nothing, know that Jesus got something for you. Amen. <laughs> don't get all wrapped up, amen, on temporal things. Know that you got some eternal good things coming your way. He goes on, and, 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 and so we learn, we learn, we learn, beloved, that you and I, uh, uh, who claim the name of Christ, we are indeed family. I know it don't feel like it, don't look like it. You got some white brothers, some vanilla brothers, some, some chocolate sisters. You got, you, 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 you got, you got some banana-looking people. You got, you got all these folk up in here, amen. I'm talking about color schemes. So when you think about who we are, we are family, black, white, yellow, white. We're all precious in God's sight, and so... We're giving this ideal of what it means to be family. Now, this truth, it has huge implications that we must unpack and apply to our everyday lives in, this, in, in, in the in interactions with one another. Here's the reality, y'all. Here's the reality. We are called to be together. We're called to be the family of God. Right? We're, we're giving love and family doses. It's, 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 it's what Jesus describes for the family of God. It's the distinguishing mark that we have. In fact, Jesus was so succinct and so clear about it that Jesus makes it clear that the family of God has a unique DNA that supersedes biological markers. Catch his words in John 13, 34 and 35. Jesus says this, a new command I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people shall know you are my disciples if you have, if you have love for one another. Because the Spirit of God lives in us, because we have this, 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 this new DNA, this new spiritual DNA, uh, 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 it says that we should have love for the brethren. We are a spiritual family in Christ. We are all in the family of God. Amen. The Bible reminds us that in Genesis, that in the beginning, that, 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 that being in God's family is so important that it says, in the beginning, let us create man. Let us create man in our own image. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit came together in community and made this distinguishing deal. They says, we're going to create man in our own image. And if, I, if I'm created in the image and likeness of God, then I desire what God desires. And if God starts off in community, that means you and I ought to be living in community in this very moment. Just like your real family. Just because you don't like them, you can't write them off. You still got to deal with them. Every now and then, you got to pick up the phone. Show up at a dinner. 
right, be at an event. Even if we're going to sit at opposite sides of the table, we're still in the room together. Can I just say this, just, just so I can clear the air so we won't be all thrown off. Pastor, where you going when you talk about all in the family? I'm getting there. Just hang on in with me. Let me just tell you, by nature, your family's a mess. Any hands in the place? I got messy family. Any hands in the place? Okay, just, just me and Sister Dale, we got the messy family. The rest of y'all, y- rest of y'all, y'all got the Cosby family. 30 minutes, amen. Y'all, y'all families are episodes. My family is a drama, amen, amen. And so, and so, and so watch this here. Just like my natural family is messy, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on in with me. I expect my church family to be messy. I know you're saying, Pastor, but we full of the Spirit. We speak in tongues. We lay hands on folk. We roll in the floor. Yeah, and you messy. Uh huh. And, 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 and the messiness of it should not push us away from one another, amen. It should draw us closer to each other because when I see your mess, guess what? I see my mess. That's the beauty of family. The beauty of family is some of y'all got on masks this morning, and that's cool. I understand we've been, we, we went through a COVID crisis for our, for our visitors. Hey, but, but, the beauty, but, the beauty of, but the beauty of family is this here. You don't have to wear your mask. I ain't talking about the mask that protects you from COVID. I'm talking about the Halloween mask that you wear. Amen. I'm talking about the one that you put on, amen, when you put on a good show in public, amen. It's, it's, it's that one when you know you got bad cheering, but, 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 but when folk come to the house, you say, you better not embarrass me. Right? You know, you, it, 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 it's, where, it's where you send them to their room and you make visitors believe that they say, you ain't got to do that in the family. You just got to be real about who we are. We family. This is us. I'm so tired of people coming to church looking for perfect people when they know themselves they all jacked up. And I'm so tired of people sitting in the pews acting like they got it going on when they know they broke as a joke. Amen. When they know they need help. When you know you need somebody to pray over your big head self, let's stop acting like, hey amen, we got it going on when we know we need somebody who's a little bit further down the road. Maybe, listen, catch this, catch this. I'm off script right now. I'm going to come back to it. Maybe this week, hey amen, I'm praying for you, but next week you're going to have to pray for me. Mm-hmm. And the Bible says the prayers of the righteous avail much, and the righteous that God is talking about is not whether or not you good or bad. It is because you've been cleansed by the blood of God, and his righteousness is imputed to you. And so when you open your mouth, God says, one of my children are talking. It's just like this here. You can be in the mall. I used this illustration before. I'm coming back for those who are translating. You could be in the mall, amen, and you can get lost from your child. And the mall is crowded. And, and, and you can say, Johnny. Now, it's 10 Johnnies in the mall, but only your Johnny hears your voice. Why? Because there's a familiar sound to it. Amen. There, there's a connection. Same way, amen. You can spot your sister in across, across the park. Amen. They, 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 they look like they belong to me. It's just, like, it's just like here in Houston. That's why I love Houston. I love the diversity of Houston. Sometimes, man, when I'm traveling uh, throughout Houston and I'm speaking in different places and, and, and I get to speak in all these different ethnic churches and, and I'll go to a church, amen, and it, it'll be a church from Kenya. And I, I love the way that Pastor Yimmy comes up to me and he puts his hand on my face and he says, you are my brother. He don't say it like that. He says, you are my brother, yeah. right? <laughs> And, 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 he, and, he, and he grabs my cheekbones and he says, but I know where you're from. But then he says to me, he says, but you are more than my brother, amen. You are my spiritual brother, amen. Where are you going with this, sir? Pastor? Here's where I'm going, here's where I'm going. We are a spiritual family. We are all in the family of God. Jesus taught that there can be, no gr- there can be a group of fellow believers in your life that are closer than your physical family. Now, this is an amazing deal. He demonstrates this importance of the, eternal in, 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 of the eternal family. When Jesus' mom, dad, sisters, and brothers, they show up, amen, Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 through 50, they show up to come and take Jesus home. They think he's a madman. Jesus, uh, Jesus, Jesus, the crowd comes in. They say, Jesus, your mother and brothers are outside. God, amen. And they wanting, they want to speak with you. He says, someone says, Jesus says, look around. He says, he says, look around, look around, look around. He says, your mothers and brothers are standing outside. want to speak to you. He replied, look around. He says, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Catch this now. 
He, 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 says, he says, stretching out his hand towards his side, he says, here is my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of the Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Here's what Jesus is doing. Jesus' mark for family is not biology, but pneumatology. What do you mean by that? Jesus' mark by family is not the flesh, but what is born in the spirit. In other words, catch this now, catch this, catch this, catch this. The moment you come into Christ, amen, you, the moment you are adopted into the family of God, the moment you are crafted in, automatically you gain a whole bunch of brothers and sisters. So if you're an only child, you ain't got to be tripping no more. You got a whole bunch of brothers and sisters, amen. Amen. What you got to do is get out of yourself, amen, and get into the family. Amen. You got to get past yourself and get into the family. Listen, listen, Rodney King had it right when he says, when will we all get along? If we can't get along in the church, how does the world stand a chance? I'm in here by myself. That's okay, though. The Apostle Paul, here in the text, he has spent time talking to the church at Galatia about how they are to live in light of their newfound salvation. He has won them, weaned them, and now he warns them of the dangers, right, uh, 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 of, of how one is living legalistically under the law. As Christ has set them free and given them liberty in life, he now transitions to encourage them not to give up when facing difficult times within the body itself, amen. In other words, listen, 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 don't give up on me, amen. Keep on encouraging me. Don't, 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 don't walk away from somebody because they're struggling, amen. You got to keep on praying. You got to keep on sowing. You got to keep on encouraging. I always tell y'all, it's like your kid. You know your kid ain't got a lick of sports in them, amen. But you, but you cheering for your baby on the bench, amen. Amen. Your baby ain't going to never get in the game. But, but when they come around, amen, you're like, go ahead, go ahead. You know, just like me. Listen, maybe you like me. Maybe you like me, Amen. Maybe, 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 maybe your child is a CD student because, you know, at, at, when you go to graduation, all the good shouting happened at the beginning. But listen, all the good shouting, that, that's, you know, with the valedictorian, salutatorian, you know, you know, people got all, the, all that. I had none of that when I graduated. None of that. None of that. None of that. In fact, check this out. When, when I graduated, they didn't even invite me to the graduation. They said, we ain't even inviting you. They said, but you, your mom, me, my mama, and my cousin, who was a school teacher, they, we, we drove down to the school, amen, and the people gave me my diploma. They, listen, walk me in with the security guards, amen, but when they gave me my diploma, my mom and cousins, they clapped, go ahead, Ty. and listen, I stuck my head back, walked out of there just as proud as I, I could be, amen, and took a final exam, and then all they wanted to do was move me along, but it's the same way, man. You know when your baby graduated, when you didn't pay for cumin, you didn't pay for all these classes, and they just said, listen, we just, listen, if he don't say another word, we're going to get him or her out of here. And when they come across the stage, you got horns and whistles. That's how we ought to be in the body of Christ, amen. We ought to be cheering each other on all the time, amen. We ought to be celebrating each other all the time. We ought to be encouraging each other all the time. This is what it means to be family, amen. And so, here it is. You recall that he says, you foolish Galatians, who has cast a spell on you, Right? He, who, 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 have, who has told you away from Jesus? Listen, I'm tired of folk always talking about, I don't know if the church for me. I think I'm going to lead a church. Listen, the world treated you like trash. The world ain't got no love for you. Amen. We love you with all your craziness. All your messiness, all your gossip, amen. We love you when you when you missing notes, amen. You can't sing on tune, and we still celebrate you, amen. We love we 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 love you when you mispronounce words, misquote verses, when you put Moses, when you put Moses over, amen, in the tomb with Jesus. We still love you, amen. When you get it wrong, there's nothing like the church of God. Amen. I know it, I know it, I know it. Listen, 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 listen. A family, here's my first point, a family requires investment. You can't be a family without investing in one another. And I ain't talking about pampers and milk. Those are the necessities. An investment is where you go beyond, beyond what's needed, amen. You move into a whole nother level, amen. Here Paul is using common known metaphor to point out the work of being the people of God requires diligence and sacrifice. Why? Because like your natural family, uh, uh, the family of God has issues, but here's the difference. You're going to be with us forever. You don't like me. You got problems because when you get to heaven, I'm coming around the corner with Moses. I'm like, look here, I'm up in this joint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You might as well like me, amen. I'm sitting at the table with Jesus, amen. And listen, I'm smacking my lips, amen. Listen, you don't like me, you're going to have a problem because you're going to be seeing me the rest of your life. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw some of y'all eyes just get big when I said that, amen. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Listen, listen, I'm, listen, listen, listen. I'm like that boyfriend you didn't want in high school. I'm coming around the wall. Hey, I'm still right here. Eternal, amen. Listen, and so, but it requires investment. It requires investment. Why? Because like your natural family, we're going to have issues. The church has issues. This is us. If you find the perfect church, hurry up. Run out. Amen. Run out. But the moment you walked into it, it became imperfect. And so here we are. David, David gets it, states it this way. He says, in the ancient world, he told them not to lose heart uh, or, or to get tired. It was used kind of a fear of, of weariness in women experiencing labor before delivery. In other words, when a, when a, sometimes uh, some of y'all have had long labor periods, amen, where it seems like that baby ain't going to never come and, 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 and you want to give up. Give me the effort, do him. Shoot me in the back. Do whatever you got to do. Amen. Hold my hand. Squeeze me. Whatever, whatever. But he says it's, it's, it's that kind of thing where, where you feel like you want to give up. But, but he describes it as a time when hard work and is, is painful but unfinished and unrewarded. It's easy to lose heart when we feel like this will never end. It's easy to give up when you don't see the results you want to see. Listen, your marriage won't always be bad. I've had some bad seasons in my marriage. Amen. But when I got better, the marriage got better. Did y'all catch what I just said? I didn't say when she got better, when I got better. Amen. Because guess what? Before I can deal with your issues, I got to deal with mine. So, so, so watch this here. When I started investing in my marriage, it got better. Well, relationships work like that all the time. Amen. You get what you put into it. Garbage in, garbage out. Amen. Amen. But you put good things in, you get good things out. And so, and so, and so it's going to require an investment. Amen. Paul is warning us that the ideal of family utopia does not exist. Paul is saying the, saying the same way that the former has to work the soil to harvest a crop, that this relationship dynamic within the body of Christ takes time to see yielding results in fruit. Amen. Some fruit, all the apples on the apple tree are not the same size. Some watermelons are bigger than others. Some ground takes more work to see a harvest come through. It's the same way when dealing with people. That's why we got to learn to practice the principle of patience with each other. This is important because, here's why this is important, because we are both saints, catch this, y'all like that, but we're sinners at the same time. There's a dual nature to every believer. Because at one minute you can be on the mountaintop singing songs to Jesus, amen. And in the next minute, you can be in the valley acting a straight clown. Because why? We're saints and sinners at the same time, right? This means I like you. Uh, I, 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 I will have good days and bad days. I, 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 I will have some good things and, and, and I will do some dumb things. Uh, 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 like you, I'll need someone to stand with me in my darkest hour and someone to cheer me on in my triumphant moments. To, to, to really be the body of Christ at the local level requires the three eyes. Here they go. I'm going to give them to you fast. Here they are. Number one, we must be intentional. Real life and real relationships require intentional risk and must be reciprocated. We have to be intentional. Amen. You, 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 listen, 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 listen. In other words, if you're going, if, if, if we're going to be all in the family, we got to be intentional. You got to, we, 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 we got to be deliberate in our actions, in our attitudes, and in our actions. If you and I are to be all God desires for us to be, we must make intentional efforts to invest in relationships with other believers. And just because you know a little Greek, Greek, Greek and Hebrew, because you geek out on commentaries? Listen, don't mean everybody want to do that. Sometimes I just want to come out and hang out with you, amen, and have a nice tall glass of tea without all this extra stuff going on. Amen. Can, can you come visit me sometime and it not be a counseling session? Can we just hang out? Amen. Can we, can, can, listen, 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 listen. I know I'm the pastor, but I'll just be honest. Sometimes I see your phone number and I just hit the button. I say, I'm going to hit them later. Because I know sometimes when I call you, you see my phone number and you hit the button. All right, now. Don't, don't, listen, listen don't, you ain't got to act funny. We having a family conversation. This is us. Yeah. We having a family conversation. Because you know, you, know you know every time pastor calls, he wants you to do something. He don't want nothing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's what y'all say. Oh, that old pastor, here he come. Oh, my God, what does he want? I see y'all sometime in Walmart. Y'all see me and y'all duck in the aisles. I'll be seeing y'all. I'll be seeing y'all. Huh? I'll be seeing y'all. But I'm going like, but, but I'm, but, but I'm to be like my Uncle Neil. I'm going to call you out right there, in the, right there in Walmart. Amen. Amen. I see you. I see you. Amen. I see you. I see you. Listen. So number one, it must be intentional. Number two, right, we must be involved. If the church, as we hope it to be, is to shine and grind and make purposeful progress at reaching, and hurt, reaching the hurting and hopeless humanity, it requires consistent involvement in ministry of the local family of God. In other words, God has not asked you to come here and sit on your hands. <clears throat> Stop swerving and start serving. Stop skipping out the side door, amen, and find a place to serve. Stop talking about the church and all this. They ain't got all that. They ain't doing all this. They ain't doing all that. Because guess what? You keep swerving out the side door, amen. If we can get you to serve, we can do better. Amen. Because I'm telling you, after I done prayed for y'all all weekend, hoping y'all show up, amen, hoping y'all give, hoping we can keep the lights on, hoping we can serve some, some children in the community, hoping, 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 hoping. I'm tired some Sundays, even when I step in the pulpit. That's why, that's, that, that, that's why it requires involvement, because some of y'all got skills and gifts and talents, amen, that can take the load off of the staff and the pastor and run on, amen. You don't need a title, amen, to do ministry. Stop, listen, this ain't the price is right. Stop waiting for somebody to call your name. Get on up and get in the game right now. Listen, listen. We like to say we're better together around here, but we're only better together if we all if we all in the game. Amen. Now I was a baseball player. I was a baseball player growing up. The worst thing you can do for a baseball player is to put pads on them and put them in a football game. I'll never forget. They said, all we need you to do, Brian, is return the kick. So I watched a couple of guys do it, and I was like, oh, I could probably do that. So they put me in the game. Right? I caught the ball. I took off running. I'm running straight up just like a ball player. Running straight up just running, man. And guess what? I didn't see all them other people on the other side. This dude came out of nowhere, hit me so hard, knocked all the life out of me. The only thing I remember next is I was standing on, I was laying on the sideline next to the coach looking at me saying, are you okay? Huh? I don't remember anything else. Guess what? My baseball coach came out the stand and said, take off all that stuff. <laughs> take it all off. You got some shorts on? Take it all off. Looked at the football coach, threw that stuff to him and said, come on, get out of here. I never played football again. <laughs> if you go back to my high school, I'm in one game. I took the worst hit ever, fumbled the ball, amen, and don't recall them pulling me off the field. <laughs> but I was willing to get in the game. Listen, listen, for the, sake of the, for the sake of the team, I was willing to get in the game. See, 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 and that's what I mean. We got to be involved. Listen, so, so that wasn't my thing. So guess what? I had to go back to, and try something else I, and go back and try something else, go back and try something else. So listen, just, fit, just get in where you fit in. And if you don't fit there no, no more, we got another spot for you. See, that's what it means, amen. We're all in this together. Here's, here's the Bible says. The Bible says that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift the other up. But woe unto the one who is alone. When he falls, he have no one to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then, then they have heat. But how can one warn another alone? If one prevails against him, two should withstand him. A three-four cord is not easily broken. In other words, amen, it requires all of us doing our part to make this thing work. Pastors hate the summer. They know they're going to be looking at a bunch of empty chairs. Not because people are traveling. Huh? Because people in the trance, they're hugging a the pillow on Sunday morning. Listen, all y'all watching on social media, God bless you. Pastor, love you. But I'm not a big fan of social media. I'm a little old school. I think we need to come rub el elbows. I think social media has made the church lazy. That's just me. Amen. Now, I know it's necessary. Now, I know there are some sick folk 
and there's some people who had work and some folk who, who didn't get home until 4 in the morning. I hope it wasn't from the club. I hope it was from the job. Amen. And, 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 all, and, all, and all that. Because, you know, when I was a teenager, my auntie made us go to church. And I didn't believe nothing about God. We could come in the house at 5 in the morning. Aunt, Aunt Ollie was going to make you go to church, amen, at 8 a.m. Because we had to ride the bus with her to go to church, amen. And she made us get up. And listen, with our stank breath and, and, and our club clothes on, she drug us on up in there. But we got to be involved. We, 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 we got to make a deal. Here's the last one, right? We must be willing to be inconvenienced. The very nature of family means we're going to be inconvenienced. When it was just me and Sister Dale in the beginning, listen, we was in love. Man, I mean, life was just rosy. It was beautiful. It was just me and her. We can just pick up, go where we want to go, amen, stay up all night. It was just love. Then children showed up. And the moment children showed up, you walking out the door, you go, ha, 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 ha. You got to get them. You, you know, you, you got to take them with you. You couldn't even enjoy vacation. When they became teenagers, you'd be out on vacation. They texting you and calling you and arguing about stuff. Amen. Why? Because family means we're going to be inconvenienced from time to time. Have you ever had a relative show up unexpected? I just happened to be in town. And, and this is what you say. You say, oh, man, where you staying? Like, Right over here. <laughs> this is what family do. Remember I told you about those family reunions? I loved them because here's what I mean. We lived in a house that was about 600 square feet, but my mama was able to put 30, 40 people in that house every family reunion. You got, you got what they call a pallet, not a wood pallet. You got you a sheet, a blanket, and you laid it on the floor. And whatever clothes you brought with you was your pillow. Amen. And you just found you a spot. And when you got up to pee, you just be stepping over folk. Amen. Because we're nobody paying for no hotel. We See, sometimes you got to be inconvenienced. Same way in the church. Listen, listen, listen. Sometimes you're going to be inconvenienced in the body of Christ. Sometimes you're going to have to get out your bed at 2 in the morning and go check on a brother or sister. Sometimes you're going to have to come here and greet and usher and sing and, and, and stand and serve in children's church, amen, and be a community group leader and open up your home and meet people here online and offline. Sometimes you got to be inconvenienced. That's what it means to be all in the family, amen. Man, this is us. Say, Pastor. Pastor, so, 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 so where are we going, right? Where are we going? Consider Paul's words in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 14, 15. Look, look what he says. He says, and we exhort you, brothers and sisters, and to warn those who are idle. Comfort the discouraged. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Look what he says. He says, he says, so this is how we don't give up on, on doing good. He says, warn them, be patient with them, comfort them, amen, right? He says, and make sure no one pays evil for evil, amen, but always pursue what is good, good for one another and for all. Rejoice always, pray constantly, and give thanks in everything, for this is God, this is Christ's will for you concerning Christ Jesus. He tells us these things, right? And so, and so he wants us to understand that we are a family together. Here's my last point. Listen. A family is for outsiders and insiders. A family is for outsiders and insiders. Look at verse 10 with me. Look what it says. It says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us work for the good of all, especially for those who belong to the household of faith. Now the Apostle Paul tells us that while we're waiting to reap our reward and we're not, we're not wandering around, but we are working uh, uh, what does it mean to make the most of every opportunity that's been given to us? Amen. He, he says, he says, for both outsiders and insiders, you may recall that during our gifted series uh, that we determined that spiritual gifts was for the common good of all and for the glory of God, both for those in the house and those looking from the outside. Amen. Every family is known by something. Every family is known by something. If you could pause with me for a moment and think of the families you know that you grew up with that was in your neighborhood, there were clear identifying markers that they were known for. I grew up with some dudes called the Lewises. They were all about five foot two. But boy, you didn't want to fight them jokers. Listen, they had hands. Listen, listen, and weren't afraid of nobody. But here was the other, here was the other distinguishing marker. You just couldn't fight one of them. It was like 12 of them. Every time one of the other brothers saw you, he wanted to fight. You was like, oh, no, you fought my brother. By the third fight, you're like, which one? They had a distinguishing mark about them, amen. 
There was a guy named Mr. Peoples. Everybody had dirt in their front yard where I grew up. But the distinguishing mark of Mr. Peoples, he, he was the only person who had grass. He had grass. And he was the only person who had a fence because he knew what we was going to do. We was going to walk all over that grass. Amen. Every family has a distinguishing mark. So does the body of Christ. Our family, the HEC family, we have a reputation in our community and around the city. We have a reputation for serving broken, bruised, and battered people in our communities. We have a reputation, amen, for going after the least of these. We have a reputation for serving hungry kids with our weekend meals program. We have a reputation, amen, for mentoring students from kindergarten all the way through college. We have a reputation, amen, of doing large block parties that bring whole communities together so that they can have a repeated opportunity to hear the gospel. We, 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 we are known as a people of love and care for those on the outside. That's why when people show up at the church, amen, with all of their brokenness, we don't turn our nose up. When folk come in their club clothes, we're not looking at them crazy, amen. That's why we don't have big eyes and small U's. When people are struggling in their sin and people have identity issues, amen, we ain't moving away from them because we have a reputation as, as the family of HSC of, of walking with broken and hurting people. But we also have a reputation at HSC about caring about one another, amen. And this is sometimes, if you knew, you get confused because you think them folk always up in my business. No, we are a church full of loving people, amen. And we want the best for everybody, both outsiders and insiders, amen. See, a marker of who we are as a church is that we don't care who gets the credit as long as Christ is glorified. But this is, this is only half of the story. It's true that as a family of believers, what, 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 what we want will make space for those who are far from Christ, amen. So we want to give people an opportunity to be on our team. Read the text with me one more time. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us work for the good of all, especially for those who belong to the household of faith. Amen. So we're given a few principles. Let me give you these three principles, then we go home. Number one, he says, make the most of every opportunity to make an impact in the lives of others. That means that, 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 that you don't miss an opportunity, amen. This is important because we do not know what tomorrow holds. Can I just tell you? We don't know what the next hour holds. A friend of mine's wife died eating a sandwich. She choked on the sandwich. She was all alone. There was nobody to do the Heimer maneuver. He had just talked to her. Another friend of mine, amen, his fiance, they had gotten to an argument, and 90 minutes later, she was in a car accident and died. We don't know what tomorrow holds. That's why we have to make the most of every opportunity, amen. Listen, 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 listen. Catch this now. We family, but I'm going to give y'all something. This is a good one, amen. Listen, listen, listen. Don't stay mad at people long. Get over stuff. Matter of fact, let me just tell you. It ain't stuff you need to get over. Get over your own self. Amen. God, listen, God is calling us to something greater and better, amen. In other words, amen, listen, make the most of every opportunity, amen. So, so, so that's number one. Number two, amen, make space for outsiders. Colossians 4, 5, and 6 says, act wise towards outsiders, making the most of time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt. Can I pause right there? Not only your speech, let your fingers be graced with salt, amen. So when you're on social media acting crazy with folk you don't know, amen, don't know how far away they are from God, get your big head self together, amen, and, and treat people the same way God will want you to treat them, amen. Love people where they at. Stop being a fool all the time. Mahat Gandhi said, Mahat Gandhi said, I would have I, I became a Christian if I ever met one. To reach people, we must be wise on how we operate, right? And not become a stumbling block. Our culture trains us to put our self-interest ahead of others. We teach and train our kids not to allow anyone or, or, or have perceived to take advantage of them, amen. Don't get me wrong now. Teach them to hit back. Amen. 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 I told my grandson, look, if they hit you, you hit them on back, amen. And if they, they suspend you, don't worry. Papa will come on to the school and have a good conversation with them, amen. Amen. But don't you just ball up in a knot, let nobody beat you down. I know that that might not work for everybody. Amen. 
But my little grandson, he's just a little bitty fella, amen, so he got to learn how to fight. Listen. <laughs> then you can apologize later. Remember we said, we, we said early, family requires investment, intentionality, and inconvenience. Listen, don't act like I'm the only one, amen. Amen. Some of y'all grown. Y'all don't fight no more with y'all hands, but y'all still slamming doors. Amen. Y'all, y'all still making, leaving tire tracks in the road so the neighbors can see. You mad at your spot, so you turn the TV all the way up, blasting. Don't act. See, see, listen, listen, listen. You ain't go eat it, but you leave it out on the counter so it go bad. See, it's all kind of little crazy stuff we do. We do all kind of crazy stuff. But that's what makes us family. We all a little off. This is us. We all, and some of us are a lot off. Did I point over there? No, I didn't. Listen, listen. <laughs> Listen, listen, (laughs) your home is either a prison or a palace. Think about this. Your home is either a prison or a palace. It either gates people in, amen, or it has a drawbridge to allow people in into that space. We're asking God for opportunities to impact those outside of the faith. The Bible says you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it out on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. When was the last time you was nice just because being nice matters, amen? Here's the last one. Care for those in the family of God. We're called to do good towards those outside, but the Bible says, but especially towards those inside the house of God. If you don't know nobody's name and you've been coming to church for months, what's wrong? You ain't never, you ain't never been to the park or had pizza with nobody. And then you be talking about, I, I, I just, I don't know what's going on. I just can't make friends with nobody. I just can't get with nobody. I can't just, this. my wife used to tell me I had the meanest face in the world. So I started working on it. I did. But, 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 but understanding where I grew up at, amen, you had to mean mug people all the time. Because if you smiled at people, it was an invitation to get robbed. I had to explain that to her. But then when I became a Christian and the Holy Spirit began to live in me, guess what? If I want to reach people, amen, can you imagine me walking up to somebody looking like I'm about to rob them? talking about Jesus is good all the time and all the time Jesus is good huh nobody nobody no listen no no, listen nobody want that crazy face from you amen people 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 listen 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 God's people ought to be the most happy people there is amen we should always be smiling why because we know the end of the story we know how all this how how this wraps up we know where we're headed amen we know that in my father's house are many mansions if not so he would not told you so amen hey listen listen i might be struggling now but a day is coming amen and the by and by when my body won't ache no more amen when my car won't break no more amen when my shoes won't wear out anymore amen when when, listen 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 when when, listen when i won't have to pay rent or, or, or pay another house note when i won't have to pay the hoa anymore there's coming a day amen that's why you and i ought to be excited amen we happy on something that they, they do not have we have the spirit of the living god on the inside of us amen. amen look what he says he says and let us consider how we may spare one another towards love and good deeds hebrews chapter 10 let us not give up on meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but let us encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching amen. we're called to do life together amen. we're not having community groups for the summer, and we're going to have some Sunday morning groups we're going to launch right here at 9 o'clock. See, I'm dropping, I'm dropping, I'm casting vision, Pastor Davis, for 9 o'clock right there. At 9 a.m., we're going to start having some Sunday morning groups. We're going to have about four or five of them going. We're going to still have our community groups throughout the week. Listen, but, but, but guess what you could be doing during the summer? Amen. You could be hanging out together. You could be visiting each other. You could be doing a little life together. Amen. Listen, stop waiting for the church, amen, to, to create play dates for you. Grown folk ought to be able to get together without the church, amen, creating play dates. If the church don't make it happen, it ain't happening. No, 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 no. God has called us to do life together. Called for us to do life together. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite some of y'all to the crib. Bring your own plate. Amen. Amen. So here it is. Here it is. We're called to look out for each other in the house of God. We have been made one under the body of Christ, amen. 
right? Number one, we, we, we encourage others not to give up by, encourage, by, by, by others as well. We fight the evil of loneliness because we are a community with other believers. We provide an example to outsiders of the unfading love and humanity of God. Consider this today, the importance of us doing life together. Some churches are set up for Sunday morning crowd gathering, and that's awesome. However, I believe that HEC, our best ministry happens the other six days of the week. But that only happens if we're all in the family together. Your kids ought to grow up with some other kids in the church and go to school with some other kids in the church because we live in close proximity to each other so, that that, so, 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 so they can be what I call spiritual snitches. Yeah. And they prayer time. They ought to be, when you hear your kids pray, Lord, I'm praying right now that Lamar uh, will not smoke another cigarette. And then that parent hears that prayer and go tells the other parent because we're doing life together. And when somebody comes and tells you your kid's bad, you don't want to fight, you say, man, what they do now? We need to do life together. This is us. We're called to be a body of believers with all of our dysfunction and all of our function doing life together. So I want to encourage you, just like your natural family is all messy and you don't give up on them, don't give up on your spiritual family. We're going to make it together and we're going to be better together. Let me just share this last little story with you. Dawson Trotman was the founder of the Navigators. The Navigators is this huge worldwide ministry that does discipleship all over the world. Dawson had this passion for discipleship and he left a legacy. Here's the deal. Dawson died in a swimming incident. Uh, a boat had capsized, and two young girls were over, and Dawson jumped into the lake. He saved the first girl. He, he, he came up. He went back down, got the second girl, and came up. But on the third time, he didn't come back up. He was an expert swimmer. They had to drag a net for hours to find his body. But here's the deal. Time magazine ran an article the next week on his life. And they put in the caption beneath his picture, always holding somebody up. Who are you holding up? Who are you encouraging? Who are you doing life with in the body of Christ? Are you always holding somebody up? That's my hope for us as a church, collectively and individually. Can I pray for us this morning? Father, we thank you. We praise you and magnify you, God, Father. We thank you so much, Lord, that we get to do life together. No big eyes, no small U's. Just a group of imperfect people serving a perfect God. God, there might be somebody here this morning who says, listen, I, I, I thought about surrendering my life to God, but I knew I had all these issues. Listen, join the issue people. I, I was going to come to God, but I had to, get, I had to get right, amen. Listen, this is the can't get right crowd. Join the can't get right crowd this morning. The Bible declares that God loves you just as you are. He loved you so much that he sent his son. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And God knew that saving you was not going to make you perfect in this life. But he was going to give you an advocate that if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse you, forgive you, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. As you're here this morning, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to extend you an invitation to come to God just as you are. I can't get myself together. You can't get yourself together. We have to come to God just as we are all of our baggage, with all of our sin, and begin to walk with him. If that's you, amen, I simply ask that you would stand where you're at. I want to pray with you. I want to encourage you. I want to walk with you. If you're here this morning, you're struggling with isolation and loneliness. We want you to plug into a community group. We want you we want, you to, we want you to find a friend in the body of Christ, in this body, amen. We want you to, we, we, we want you to say, hey, can we, can we go to lunch 
today? Can I, can I get to know you? Can we walk together? And if you got it together, as some of us believe we do, amen, be inconvenienced for somebody else, amen. I want to encourage you to open your home, open your life. Be a help to somebody who needs help. Father, we thank you this morning that you're doing exceedingly abundantly more than we ask, think, or could ever even imagine according to the power of God that's at work in us, God. You're saving, you're healing, you're delivering, you're setting free, God. We thank you, God, Father, because you are faithful. You are God alone. In Jesus' name, let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Amen.